I wasn't entirely pleased with how the Xbox previously turned out. Today, that hopefully changes. What I've got in mind is to fit the console, its cooling components, and more, all in this old PC case. If glanced at head-on, it looks like something that came out of a recycle center. However, by angling it just a few degrees reveals that it's much more than what meets the eye. Let's get straight into it by doing a teardown and seeing how much space we can clear up by removing all the old components. Power supply just fell out, so uh, that's one thing solved. Uh, so I ended up just ripping the <laughs> CPU cooler off. Where are these mounting holes? What is holding the board in? There it is. Brilliant. This is DDR2 RAM. Two gigabytes of it. And the GPU as well. You know what? I need an upgrade. Let's uh, save it for later. All of that is riveted in. So I'll be right back when I put it all off. Yeah, we got it. Those rivets didn't know what hit him. Aside from... Yeah. Oh yeah, I almost took out this panel by mistake. I was just drilling everything. Let's take a look at the components. We got the RAM, the GPU, the Wi-Fi card, CPU, fan, power supply, optical drive, other drive, hard drive, SSD, and cooler. This thing looks pretty power intensive. I might have to water cool it sometime in the future. Here's the layout for the components. I'll use 3D printing to produce mounts for them. If you want to do a similar project but don't have access to a 3D printer, no worries, PCBWay can help you with that. They offer versatile 3D printing services to suit your needs and have fast shipping time to get the parts to you ASAP. With not only 3D printing services, but CNC machining, laser cutting, PCB fabrication and more, PCBWay is your one-stop shop to bring production level quality to your projects. I've tested out their SLS 3D printing and was blown away by the quality. I've also got some SLM aluminum parts on the way to showcase as well. I think I could put the temperature sensor screen here, we'll talk more about that soon. I'm going to use this fan to take air in, is it? I don't know. The radiator is going to go here, and so I can basically remove all of the standoff threads that aren't being used. And then I can add my own. So that's awesome. Mounting isn't going to be a problem at all. If I hold it up right, it doesn't look too bad, does it? Got it. What I've noticed is that the radiator is of course a PC water cooling component. So it actually does fit with the mounting points. So I'll show you guys now. Okay, so I ended up mounting it a little bit further down because I still want to fit the hard drive in. So I'm going to move those brackets down one so that I can put the hard drive near the top where there's room. Should be fine. Here's the uh, front panel. So there's plenty of room. So we'll just have to design a mount for it. Oh yeah, I'm going to spray paint these accent panels white. Unless I have gray, then I'll do gray. So since there's a vent here, but there isn't one here, and it's sort of blocked, I'm going to take out this piece and make a vent for it. Hopefully that gets enough airflow. This panel is good because I can use it for mounting a bunch of stuff, but the radiator, not the radiator, the reservoir, won't be able to be mounted to it. I want it to go here. I think I'm just going to mount it. Let's get this fan mounted as well. Wait, what am I doing? Why am I installing that? I bought this fan specifically beforehand. Oh, I'm gonna install that instead. Yeah, sorry 15 year old 12 volt fan. You're getting replaced with RGB. That looks a lot more modern. It's so early, but it's really looking so cool because I know that fan's going to be looking real nice. Those fans are blue. I wanted to make sure that the wireless controller adapter and the Wi-Fi adapter would still fit, and they do, which is good. Let's do a little test placement. 
But yeah, no, this is really good. Everything turns on, so that's good. We've just spent the last 20 minutes installing the block and the X clamp. I had a comment um, saying that I should really install this, uh, something about warping the, the PCB. Um, I don't remember it fully, but I've installed it now to the best of my ability and I think it's a lot more stable. Here's the updated situation. So I needed to make sure the cables would fit, so I moved the radio radiator over just a little bit. Reservoir, I mean. Radiator is still in the same place. I test fit the cables, that's why the power socket was in. The uh, X clamp was an absolute pain, but uh, it's all mounted now properly, which is good. I've written down on some notes what I need to do next. So let's install the tubing. Putting the ones on the block are gonna be a little annoying, but should be fine. Okay, that's one. There we go, out of the way of the power cable. I'm trying to figure out the most practical way for this. Oh, I just realized, of course I installed the radiator wrong. Okay, back to how it was supposed to be. Oh, don't mind that that cable is really not connected. I think I might rearrange it. So this one is gonna connect to here and this one is gonna connect to here. That was easy. And we'll route this under. Oh, everything looks so messy at the moment. It'll be, it'll be so much better, I promise. Radiator's properly installed. So what I'll do is I'll actually 3D print a bracket that holds it right here. It'll mount to these two screws. I sure hope everything does eventually, you know, turn on after the build is done. Oh, that's great. That's really cool seeing it so much more refined. Except for that. Okay, I fixed it. My workshop's an absolute mess at the moment, but the project does look pretty good so far. Okay, I want to mount the hard drive easily, and I think I've got a good idea how. We're literally going to put it like right there. Right, we're gonna have to take this off real quick. We're gonna install it right there. So basically, we wanna have it like that. That should be fine. Oh, here we go. For those who want the numbers, there they are, 2007. By using a countersink bit or whatever, we can... And if you can't get the rest of it out... It was incredible. I was able to measure it properly and get the screw holes to align exactly right. That's awesome. Makes up for the lack of precision you guys are probably used to when watching my content. Oh, but I'm still dropping screws left, right, and center. Oh, are these not even matching screws? Oh, never mind, no one will know. Okay, how does the mount look? Oh, it looks fine. You can add the drives from the back. If I can do it with one hand. There we go. That's pretty cool. There we go. Cool. Depending on where you look, it looks a couple degrees off. And if I find a better place for it, I'll just move it there instead. We're looking more complete uh, every day. Well, the workshop is getting messier every day. Right, next up is the optical drive. We're making good progress. Now, I definitely want this to go here, but that's gonna be quite, quite an effort. Oh yeah, I need to get the front panel. I actually lost it for a second. As you can sort of see there, that's the cable for the optical drive. And since we're printing something at the moment, let's extend it because it's way too short. We're gonna unplug the cable and then I'm gonna individually cut each wire and lengthen it one by one so I don't get them mixed up. This is gonna take a bit. Now going back from this, red wire first. So we'll be doing about 10 centimeters per wire. That'll be a good addition. Yeah, got my two little bits of heat shrink. Both pieces have heat shrink. And now both pieces have been heat shrunk. That's wire two, wire three, four, that's five, six, seven, that's eight, nine, ten. That's all cables extended. Didn't take too long, but it was still annoying. Okay, so V1 of the bracket is done, and it actually, it works, it fits. Uh, I somehow got the mounting holes correct, even though they're pretty small. I'm printing something at the moment for a future video, so hopefully that doesn't get annoying. Basically, I've put the hard drive, no, I've put the optical drive on its side. And currently we just need to drill the holes and install the bracket. Hmm, this will be interesting. And uh, yeah, now next up is the cable. The cable wasn't perfect, but I've tried to improve it. I lengthened it and I also added some cable management to it. It barely reaches. Now it could definitely do with a bit of tidying up, but it will be viewed from a distance, probably with a, a panel. But yeah, it's definitely something I would like to improve. Nonetheless, it, it should work, hopefully. Um, I think we should do a test actually. 
that one was intimidating me on the list, but we're getting there. Next up is mount the temperature probe. Now, this is where it gets interesting. This is the W1209 thermostat module. It works by using this thermistor here connected to a relay, and uh, it's great for, you know, building a mini fridge or something like that. We're just gonna be using it to measure the temperature. So if we go over here to where I've got the components for the Xbox installed, don't mind that, it's for a uh, future project. We have the old thing that was on the computer. It's not a screen, I don't know what it is. See, it, it went here. And I think it'd be so much cooler if this went here. Now I could of course just desolder the screen and then extend the, the wires for the pins, but I'd much rather have the whole thing mounted. Ugh, I hate the smell of ABS, burnt or printing or just in general. I mean, it's not healthy either. All right, I, uh, I got it hard mounted now, so it's not, it's not moving anywhere. <laughs> Since it works, we'll leave it for now. Um, realistically though, I still have to get this hooked up. I know it won't be the most accurate, but still I'd rather have it. And I've got to get power to it, so I'm, I'm gonna run it through the case. I intend to cover this whole area here, so you won't see the power bricks, or if you do, you won't see the cables. I wanna make the build look clean and functional. So these wires are long enough to reach the power. However, the thermistor uh, is not. I'm gonna take the easy way out again. I'm gonna put the thermistor in the reservoir to measure coolant temperature. It'll be easier than haphazardly mounting it on the SOC again. I'm just gonna make do with it for now. I want some form of temperature indication. Since this is the Xbox 360E, I couldn't find any details on how to actually get the thermistor information from the board. If anyone does know though, please let me know in the comments. It means we can also cross this off. So we've got two things left, which is wiring and printing extras. So to get a better representation, I've got to fit in that power brick and also the socket and the cables. It actually looks pretty manageable. This is the 12 volt brick that powered the Arduino pump and then here's the fans, but it's we don't have the Arduino anymore and it's not very tidy. So I'm gonna fix that up real quick. Okay, here's the situation. This is power for the thermostat, that's two wires. Power for the pump, that's two wires. And power for all the fans, that is two wires. So we need to combine all those into two wires and hook it up to here. Um, on a side note, I am aware that there are connectors where you can put all of the wires together and, and just merge them together basically. I'm gonna order some of those. I'll, pu I'll put an image up on screen of what I mean. I think they're called like terminal connectors or something. Maybe I'm delusional, but it doesn't look too bad actually. So this is where the majority of the cables are because the adapter thing is here. We've got brick one, brick two. The fan cable here is a little bit too short, um, but we can fix that by extending the thermistor Thermistor. I've got an idea for something that could be simple but effective is basically we would have a cover that goes like this but there'll be slots for the cables to go in and out and then I can drill into the bottom of the chassis and it, it would be cool. I'm a little hesitant but I'm pretty sure that's wiring done. Now we just got to print the extras which is gonna be awesome. All right the part is done not too bad cover looks good. So before it looked like this and now and there we go. I think that's so much better, having the cables just run into there, especially if we put a side panel on. Um, I would like a clear panel, but we'll see what I have in stock. And of course the, uh, the optical drive needs a cable, but it's either really short cable or really long cable. So here's the situation, we've got that plugged in. I've got it running behind the hard drive, then going into its port. At least I think that's its port. See, so yeah, everyone has different ways of doing things and this is just my way of doing it. Although I guess if I did have like a year of progress, a year of time to do this, then uh, be a little bit better. I would really need to touch up on CAD and other common sense things. Oh, now that I think about it, I never installed the power socket, but uh, we can just plug down the back. It was looking suspiciously tidy. Okay, well, it's not too bad, but still this cable is flopping around, it's kind of annoying, but if you lay it flat, it's still really compact. There's a lot of, a lot of open space. So I either tuck them down and I print another thing like this, or I shorten them, or I'll have a think about it. Here is my very basic sketch for the cover for the power and electronics thing on the left side. I can't draw very well, but uh, I'll try and recreate this in CAD. And then I'll see what I can do about this stuff here. So we've got to do a cover for the DVD drive. We've got two vents that are gonna be sitting here. Um, I'd like to do a cover for the electronics and I will fix up that power socket. So a cover for here and a cover for here. I have printed out the cover for the cables and the power bricks. I printed out the cover that goes on the front of the machine. Okay, so we have three parts printed. However, I had a filament swap. We're out of gray filament, so I'll be spray painting that final piece. We're currently printing the grills for here and here. Yeah, the machine's looking a lot more fleshed out. And we got three more parts to install. Two more are drying currently. I've been spray painting them. I'm pretty pleased with how this part turned out. It's, it's simple, but it works. Yeah, as you can see, the pipe doesn't look too good, but if we slot it in, it looks so much better. If you follow it, 
there's no harsh curves. It's all so much better. I'm so glad that was so easy to design. <laughs> when 3D modeling, I used three different units, three different forms of measuring. And I've even been sketching out my designs beforehand. It's actually a good practice. I'm gonna keep drawing that. As you can see, the front panel is a bit of a gap there. That's why I printed this here. It just covers the, the gaps. And it doesn't look too bad, it actually blends in. Okay, and we can just tap the threads now with this bit. Okay, so the screws wouldn't thread in, but here's what we do to solve that. That's the advantage of plastic. Oh, never mind. And now they're definitely not perfect, but they don't need to be. There we go, now it just threads in like that. Really nice, simple print. Before, after. I'm not gonna dwell on it for too long. It's a nice little addition and that's that. All right, this will be interesting because this part basically is gonna slot in like that and cover up this mess. Uh, but there's like no room to work with, so I'll, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I can work with that if it stays there. Okay, that went really well. I was able to drill and tap a thread into this part without hitting the power brick. Now it's solid in place. This is solid, this is semi-solid. Power socket still needs covering, I'm, I'm gonna admit that. Even though I want this to be enclosed, I don't know if I'll have a, a panel for it, but I would still like this to be enclosed. I'm gonna do tape for now, and we'll see. If it's not visible, then I, I won't do anything too fancy. Okay, I'm gonna show you this because there's no point hiding it, but I've covered everything in tape now, and I'm gonna push it back against there. You won't even be able to see it from here, which is good. Okay, well I just tried drilling into sheet metal and I snapped off my bit. This flex is too much, so I actually have no idea how I'm going to mount this. I've got to figure something out because I don't want to leave this here. And I'm telling you guys about it so that I do something about it. Oh, okay, I just rotated this, tried drilling again, snapped a second drill bit, but I got one hole done and that's, that's fine. So I couldn't do the bottom one, but I could do the top one. That should be enough for now, hopefully. Oh, I might be able to drill it now, actually. Yeah, so I, I actually was. We have a completely strong power socket. Obviously, don't touch it when it's gonna be hooked up. For me, that's that's nice to see. For the rest of you, it might be not. I know those boxes definitely look a little boxy, but they really clean up the whole thing. Otherwise, there'd be a huge wiring mess. And so now we've got the controller, wireless adapter, and the Wi-Fi card, I believe. We've run into a little issue in that I can't get the controller card in, I'm pretty sure because of the power socket. I was able to fix the conflict by reinstalling all the parts. However, they are all making contact. This is good because I have this is not good, but I have electrical tape, but it's still, we need a, it's not a long-term solution. Let's grab those spray painted vents for the front piece. Now these front pieces aren't perfect, but this build isn't meant to be a perfect build. That will hopefully come in the future. I'll keep you guys updated on that. I wonder if I can just... Okay, top one needs some more precision. Oh, brilliant. They almost look a little too good for the front panel. It's meant to be, you know, uninviting. You know, you look at the front panel and then there's all this inside. Should I add RGB? I don't know. Now before I fill the loop, I'm actually gonna unplug the power for the Xbox and make sure that the fans and the pump work. Okay, I've dimmed the lights. This does have power that's connected. Okay, I'm gonna give it power. Okay, okay, everything turned up. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh yeah, we've gotta be careful. Let's fill up that loop. I don't think the console's seen power since December. Fingers crossed here. Oh, okay. Good thing I noticed that. That's three, two, one. Hey! Oh, we're circulating, brilliant. Filled up the rest of the reservoir. Uh, it definitely needs a lid. Having the, the probe in there is not, not the right solution. Oh yes, the front thing, is that working? All right. Oh, turning in the dark looks so cool. Um, I'll see if I can show you guys. There we go, what's that say, 22 point something? Yeah. Oh, this will look so good with the lights off. Oh, it looks so good. I thought that that fan was RGB, but it doesn't make a difference. We've got the radiator fans, we've got the coolant. Oh, it looks so good. It's like the liquid is uh, glow in the dark. It's so good. That's awesome. Granted, we haven't powered on the console, so I'm gonna get the, t the console hooked up to a TV and we can test that. Okay, this is gonna be awkward to film, so I apologize. I'm giving the console power now. Every everything is plugged in, by the way. I'm gonna turn it on. Hard drive's going. Where's the, the beep? Oh, yeah, the TV, the TV. Right, okay. Yes! Yes! Let's go! Okay, 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 okay. Let's, let's try the disk drive. So I'm gonna sign into the Xbox, eject. Yes! Crisis three. Oh, just like a PC. And then close. Cl wrong button. Controller died. Oh, let's go. Yeah. We've got the temps down there, 24.7. So that's for the coolant. Let's play some uh, Crisis 2. 
I wonder if the console is locked at 30 FPS. I don't know what the nominal frame rate is for this game. I'm not a console player, so I'm gonna butcher this so badly. Coolant temperature is 27.6 degrees currently. Front IO is looking cool. And that's loading up now. This is where it gets really good. Wow. Coolant just went up to 29.3. Uh, I'm just going to chill here for the next 10-15 minutes and see how the temps go. This is actually so pretty. I think this game came out in 2013 maybe. It looks really nice. Yeah, it looks like the highest we'll see is 29.4. It's not the best representation of actual temperature, but it's an indication. I just spent the last 20 minutes working on the uh, on the thing. Basically, I flipped the uh, the radiator. I heard from a friend that it could be bad having it having the tubes mounted on the top. I lost the voiceover file, so here's a montage instead. And that brings us to the, the boring outro. So why didn't I RGH mod this console? Well, it's just not possible. This is an Xbox 360e and it has a Winchester chip, so I can't soft mod it at all, which was a bit disappointing, but nothing I can do there. However, I do plan to revisit this project sometime in the near future, um, getting an older console that might have overheating problems, and then I'll soft mod it with RGH, might install an SSD or some other fun mods, and uh, do a better job, because I am pleased with this, but it's, uh, it's, it could always be better. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.